Hello everybody and welcome to the 20th episode of my Daryl 2119 mod pack series. Can you believe it guys? We're at the 20th episode. The magic 20 number in Daryl 20's name. <laughs> so this episode as we left off, last episode doing Batania, this time I want to work on making my Batania area look better and also have more function to it. As you can see here I was actually just taking a mana tablet so I could start you know filling these guys up with mana over here. So while that is emptying out, I will talk to you guys more about what I want to do. So I want to build, last episode I wanted, I talked about getting more mana supply, building a mana battery, and making this place look better. So that's kind of the three points I want to work on this episode. And I've been looking through the generating flowers here, and I, I'm having a, a hard time choosing what I want to do. The... Guomerilis would be an interesting one to go with. I'm pretty sure we can have fun automating a food over here that we can use to throw at the flower. Now the Entropinium is essentially uses TNT. Wait, where let's see, uses TNT explosions to make it uh, generate uh, mana. It's very good, but I I've seen, I feel like I, I don't know if I've seen that a lot, so I kind of want something different. I feel like the Gormalais is one I would like to do. On I could also you know just go with a whole bunch of Endo Flames. The other ones I don't really like the idea of. Um, they seem too tedious to do. Not even that good. Like the hydrangea, it actually straight up just disappears after a couple days. Uh, three in-game days, I think it said. So I don't really want to do that one. Um, the munch do is like just eats leaves, and I don't really feel like doing that one either. Uh, the slimes, I don't. I think it just needs like a mob spawner for slimes. I don't actually understand what this is exactly saying. So I don't want to kind of make the whole flowers and risk it. So I think what I'm going to do is make a Gormalaeus and think of some food to automate for them. I know I have burgers automated over there, but I want to use a different food to give them because those burgers are mine. They're not they're not for these these flowers over here. So I think I'm going to make probably eight to sixteen of the Gormalaeus flowers. And I'll make a five by five battery or mana battery from the all to go into. But what I need to do right now first before even getting to that is I want to make a little bit of an area out here where I can actually do my, you know, botania -ing. So I'm going to probably over the next hour or three, you guys know how long it took me to build this boring building here. So who knows how long it'll take me to build this, this outdoor botania area. So once I start getting something built, for you guys to see that's somewhat interesting, I'll bring you guys back in and hopefully it's not a complete <laughs> a complete eyesore. Okay guys, I think I created something halfway decent and this is kind of what I came out with. Now there's three tiers as you can see here. This top tier over here, this is going to be used for functional flowers or any type of functional flower stuff I want to work on. So that would be if we open up our Mexico Botania here, we go to functional flowers. That may be something like the the Clayconia, because I have really no way of getting clay right now, so that would be a decent way of getting it. Um, I haven't actually, I, I looked at all of them as you can see. I didn't really see anyone that, any of them that stuck out too much to me, besides the Clayconia, but this top row is definitely where that Clayconia would be. And I guess if you're wondering too, uh, this is a Batania block called the Pasture Seeds. It is made by putting a Pasture Seed next to a green dye, and the Pasture Seed is made by throwing grass into a mana pool to get the pasture seed. That's kind of how I made that. And then of course this is just living living rock around here. And this is the living wood that I used. And then the second row right here, this will be used for mana generating flowers. This corner right here, I plan to have a five by five area for uh, mana pools. So I can have like a mana battery right here. Over here on this wall, I'm probably going, or I guess like this area right here, I'm probably gonna make maybe 32 to 64 or 66 of these uh, endo flames to have them all against this wall, and then the wall over here. I'm going to put those gorm, uh, what are they? The gorma, the gormalaeus flowers. I'm not sure I'm going to feed the gormalaeus flowers just yet, but I kind of want to make a little thing like I did over there, automating, auto automating some sort of food for it. And I can easily automate the food down here somewhere because I already have a whole bunch of space down here, so it should be pretty easy to get that done. And then down here, we're going to have more of the open area stuff that you need kind of more space for, kind of things like the terra agglomeration plate. Uh, the terrestrial agglomeration plate, sorry, and stuff that needs a little bit more area, and I thought that would be a pretty good way to do it, and uh, honestly, guys, this is kind of embarrassing to say, <laughs> but making this 
probably took me three or four hours just to figure out what the heck I wanted to do. I have a, I had a decent idea. I, I pretty much saw the the wall right here. I was I kind of said I want to kind of just cut into it, and this is kind of the outcome of that. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, I think it looks pretty good. At least I've, of course it's not going to be completely done right now. I think I will over the course of the next. I mean, episodes and such. I'll probably touch it up to make it seem a little better. And if you guys have any um, recommendations for how to make this area look a bit better, please tell me because I'm trying to get better at building and this is kind of one way I'm doing it. Right? Yeah. So this looks halfway decent to me. I just realized I probably should put a pillar right there, but I can't because that will ruin my 5x5. Five five. So we'll, we'll think about if I want to do that or not. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole bunch of these flowers over here. Uh, just I'm just going to do this for the ex endo flames over here because the endo flames are... Something you guys already seen me do, so I don't I don't mind doing the setting this all up, up here off camera. So I'm gonna get a whole bunch of endo flames put over here. I'll probably also make the mana pools over here. So I kind of do some stuff, I guess. And then when I start doing the uh, Gormalilius flowers or Gormalilius, Gormalilius, Gorm, Gorm, just happened. Oh, I clicked the. When I start doing the Gormalilius flowers, I'll bring you guys back in for that. But right now I'm I am gonna just set up the endo flames over here as well as the giant mana battery over here. Actually, you know what? I can do it with you guys quickly first. Because we can actually activate the portal right here. All I should have to do is go to function function mode and right click right here. And this should activate the portal. And what you want to do with this is you actually take your Lexica Batania and you throw it in. You can see you get the Lexica Batania back out. And now you get a whole bunch of other stuff unlocked which means I have a whole lot of more managing flowers to look at which I actually may do that now. And see if I have anything else here. Maybe instead of using the endo flame. So I'm gonna quickly look at these. Actually, I'm just gonna look at everything, honestly. And if I do endo flames, you guys will have me. I guess you guys will see me do the endo flames right here. And if I don't, and I choose to go with one of these other mandarin flowers, I'll bring you guys back in before I actually do that and kind of describe how I'm going to do that. Because I'm sh I'm certain all these things have different ways of automating stuff. Keep pressing E. Sorry, guys. Yes, I will bring you guys back in once I get some of that stuff set up. After thinking about it a little bit, guys, I chose to not go with the end of flames. In fact, I chose to go with another flower. The other flower is the Rothfloesia. So what this flower does is it essentially eats other types of flowers and uses it to make mana. And right here, I saw ludicrous quantities of mana, so I was like, well, it's ludicrous. I want ludicrous amounts of mana, so why not go for that? However, um... It wants, as you can see here, a large variety of flowers, so I realized I'd have to figure out some way to, you know, feed it many different types of flowers. I'm hoping eight different types of flowers is enough, because that's kind of what I chose in my mind. In fact, if we look up here, I actually did a little bit of a setup to see how I want it to go. So the string right here, these are the petal apothecaries, so each will have eight different types of flowers, as I said. The moss block itself is the actual uh, flower itself, the raw flousia. And the gunpowder is just a, um, what's this one? This is a mana spreader that will shoot into the redstone, which is a mana pool. And I'm going to connect the mana pool somehow to the little mana battery made over here. I know I added these extra rows. I said I, I didn't really say I was going to add those, but I think it looks kind of cool like that. So I thought I'd just put them there. I'm not fully sure. I might just put like mana spreaders here and then another mana spreader shooting into that one over there. But we'll see because I actually am not fully sure how, what ludicrous even means. And if... These mana spreaders can even keep up. Well, I mean, I know these mana spreaders are not going to be able to keep up. I'm probably going to have to go to Dreamwood. So if we go to at Botania and go to uh, mana spreader, I'm probably going to have to use... Probably have to go to Elven at the very least. Elven's not too bad. I just need to... This is not going to show me in here. Well, actually, no. What I can do is I can go back to here and I can just do control click on there. So it's just... It's pretty simple. You just throw mana steel ingots in there into the portal right here. And that's... Uh, very simple, honestly. It just takes two seconds to do that. But that's kind of what I have set up over here. And over here, I do think I'm going to go with the Gormaleus flowers. The, these foods right here are the foods I will feed it. This one will be a lot harder to automate. So right now, I just want to focus on this one and see how much time it takes. I don't know if it will take us too long, though. But I think I think we'll be able to do this one pretty fast because I just got to have everything pop into the flowers. But as you can see, I do have my inventory prepared a little bit. To make these flowers, we need Pixie Dust, Rune of Pride, Rune of Earth, and then these petals right here. Now, Pixie Dust is pretty simple. You just take a Mana Pearl and throw it in the portal right there. Sorry, in the portal right there. So to get that, we'll need to get ourselves some 
Ender Pearls. Don't really know how much it said I needed. Oh, I need one per, so it's pretty simple. I'll just make all these go, because why not? Perfect. So we'll throw these guys in. One, two, three, and four. I'll just do two extra for good luck, because you never know. Okay, so we got that one checked out. Now so we need a Rune of Pride. Now, a Rune of Pride is actually a Tier 3 rune. The reason it's Tier 3 is because it needs a Tier 2 rune, which is the Rune of Summer, which I do have all the materials collected just because I wanted to have most things prepared for you guys when I bring you over. So, I'll just go back to that quickly. All right, I have the Brace Runes here because if you guys remember, we made them a few moments ago. So, we'll go back here. It requires both the Rune of the Earth and Rune of the Air. Uh, any type of sand, slime ball, and melon slice. So we just come back over to here. We will drop one, two, three, and I think it was the earth and air. And just so you know, guys, I did figure out that you actually get the runes back, so these two runes will come back when we do the crafting, which is honestly very nice. I will need one of these living rocks too, however, so I'll just put that on top of there while we're waiting for it. Now while we're waiting for that, we can see the rune of pride needs both the rune of fire and the rune of summer as well as two mana diamonds, which I do also have collected right there. It is really nice, because I thought I was going to have to make, you know, like whole dozens of these runes, but fortunately, as I just mentioned, it does not be used up, which I guess we'll see in one second. Boom. You can see we get our runes back, and we get our rune of summer. So now we need to use the rune of summer and earth. Sorry, we need to use yeah, summer and earth, as well as our two mana diamonds. Oh, and much like the Petal Apothecary over here, if you want to make the same rune over and over again, you can just right-click with an empty hand and it'll put all the runes back in there. However, we want to make the, the tier 3 rune right now. Did I... wrong? Oh, wait, it was, um, I think it wanted fire. Yeah, that's what it was. Now, I think I need another piece of living rock. Here. Uh, I guess if you guys, I don't know if I did show these guys, but I, I made a giant structure right here just so I could... Harvest living rock a bit faster because you can use constructors and deconstructors to make living rock. So I thought I would just go ahead and do that because it made everything much easier. Put that on top of there. Oh, and you guys may have noticed I have two terrestrial in my terrestrial ingots in my inventory. That's just because while I was building and planning and just thinking about what the heck I'm gonna do next, every time my mana pool became full, I just threw down the recipe of let's see, of the mana diamond, the mana pearl, and the mana steel ingot, just so I can, you know, have my mana be used for something instead of just keeping it there. Because I'm going to need more of these Terra Stealing Guts anyways, because I know I told you guys several times, but I really want to get the Terra Shatterer, which uh, I want to get SS tier, and the way to do that is with these uh, Terra Stealing Guts. So looks like we're ready now. Now guys, we need four of these, and I know I only made enough for one, but that's honestly because I, I did do a little preparing for this, guys, and I actually did get the other ones created right over here. And these are the flowers we're going to be using for uh, all eight. And I just throw these back extra ones over here. You can see I I didn't know at first, so I made, ended up making four summers. I didn't really know that, but it's fine. I guess I can use it for other things, like crafting. I actually don't know if these runes will be used up for this craft, because I've never actually... Well, I'm not saying... I haven't made a Botania flower in so long, but I kind of just forget. But what is nice about this, at the very least, is if we click with an empty hand, we should be able to get all the runes back. Did I? Oh, wait. Let me get one more of my runes of air for there. Where'd it go? There we go. So one, two, three, four, and with that, did I do it wrong? Oh right, we need the pixie dust too. That's what I was forgetting. Now if we go over to here, put it right there, and we click with an empty hint. Oh, I was being dumb right there. Sorry guys. We throw that back in there, and now we throw the seed in there, and we get our, we get our Ross Flowey flower. And boom. Now we got all floor oh, sorry, all four of our flowers right here. So we'll come up here and we can place our blocks right here. Now let's see. I'm going to actually make the mana pool first. We'll just pull ourselves three out. Come back up here. So we'll replace the redstone with the mana pools. Let's pick that up. Two and three. Is that four? Yeah, it's four. I just I confused myself for a second there. Now, do we want to go ahead and and make the elven mana spreaders? I think we do. Now the question is, I actually don't know. Can you do a math run at once? Yes, you can. Perfect. 
Oh, and if you guys are wondering, uh, A, you can't go through the portal, you can't go to the Elven line, unfortunately, but you actually can throw in other items besides these items, and you guess you could say, quote-unquote, use it as a trash can. However, this thing does have an internal buffer. Let's see, there's a lighting glitch right there. Uh, so if you throw too much stuff in, it'll actually stop working, so try to make sure to only throw in the stuff you need. Throw those guys in there, and it should just spit us on a whole bunch of those ingots. Perfect. Now we can get ourselves the mana. Mana. Spreader. The elven mana spreader. So it looks like we're going to need a some sort of flower. And I actually, I actually have a bunch of flowers in here already. In between this and last time, I made a whole bunch of more of those floral fertilizers and just made an absolute ton of them. So what was I doing? All right, the mana spreader. So we can't do a Gaia spreader because that requires uh, Gaia spirits and that requires the Gaia fight, which we just can't do just, just yet. So four should be enough. So what we'll do is we'll have this going right there. Now we'll have this going right there. And you know, I'm actually going to remove this mana pool right here because it looks like if I just do the same thing as I did right there, I can just go, oops, right there. I don't have an axe on me. So you guys will have to suffer through me punching it because I was prepared to bring an axe. Oh, and I guess I just stopped clicking for some reason. That's fine, though. So now we got this guy going here. We'll just have it go shooting right into there. Oh, my gosh. He just... Oh, that guy just scared me so much. For that, you will die. Oh, my gosh. He scared me. Next, we have to put our pedal apothecaries down. So let's we'll break all the string. And go right there. We'll go we'll just, um, all four of them. And with that, we place the last few ones. Perfect. So now all we should have to do is place the flowers down, and they should automatically go to the mana spreader. If we hover over it with our guy right here, it should say it's connected to the mana spreader right there. You can actually see it has an outline, so we do know it's connected to this one exactly. And back over here and just keep placing our flowers down. And boom. Perfect. And they should all be connected. Let's just make sure quickly. Yep, it's highlighted. It's highlighted. And it is highlighted. Perfect. So now that we have this set up, we need to get a way to get all of the flowers pumped into each of these petals. Or sorry, each of these petal apothecaries. But make sure... I don't know if you can put more than one in at a time or if that will mess it up. So I'm going to use Lizard Eye for this. So what I'm going to do right now, guys, is I'm going to set up a little area down there with the pyro... 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 Phytogenic isolators. So what I'm going to do quickly is just make a little area down there. And I... You guys have seen me set up machines so many times. I don't know if this will, if you guys will be a little bit annoyed at me for doing this, but I'm, I'm just going to set this up off camera and I'll bring you guys right back in once I set that up and I can bring you guys back in for me connecting probably one of these. Then I'll just connect the other ones off camera again just so you guys can see me do a little bit of the process. Okay, guys. So it turned out I was doing everything completely wrong. Um, I was reading this as, if we go back to Journey Flower, to uh, the Rafflesia. Man-made flowers in the Petal Apothecary. I took that completely wrong. I thought man-made flowers or any flowers just not spawned generally in the world. So I thought having these made in machines would make them called man-made flowers. However, I was wrong. If we go back to the book, it says man-made flowers in the Petal Apothecary. Which means flowers that are made in the Petal Apothecary. So like the Endoflame, uh, the Rose Flowery itself, the Gormaleus, or any flower that has been needed to make in the Petal Apothecary. So, everything I did up here was completely useless, pretty much. I need to re pretty much redo everything up here. And also figure out a way to automate the Petal Apothecary. Which I have, a, honestly, a decent idea how to how to automate this. I can use the dropper over here to do it pretty easily. But then the problem is, is A, placing the flowers. That's a problem. And B, automatically making the flowers. But now I need to figure out which flowers to you know, automate. Um, I will probably do the Endoflame, because Endoflame is a pretty easy one. If we just go to the book right here. Let's go to Functional Flower. Is the Endoflame... Is it, it's very simple to do the Endoflame. I'll probably also do some of the other miscellaneous flowers they have here. I'm just going to find the flowers that are the easiest and most simple to make, and then automate probably... I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably still find eight of them to do. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to get... All that kind of stuff crafted up, and I'll bring you guys back in once I have a decent amount ready, and then I can do a little bit of the automating with you guys.
I almost completely forgot about using petals to quadruple petals. So if you place one petal on the ground, you can grow it. And when you punch it, you get a block that gives a tall flower. And that tall flower gives you four times petals, which I was able to do right here. We have one of these tall flowers going in and getting four out. This is pretty much how I decided to automate all the flowers. It was, I, I went through like five different iterations, guys. At first, I tried the block breaker. That was kind of okay, but it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. The next, I tried the item user, and that just didn't work. I mean, it worked, but it only worked for two at a time for some reason. I have no clue why. So I ended up coming out with this idea. Now, it's not perfect. If I was doing it perfectly, these wouldn't be next to each other, and they'd be a bit separated, because if you look at this, the rest one's connected. So even if this one is turned on, this one, I guess both would still be going because the rest one's connected. But that's why I made sure the the number was lower than the actual amount the doors can store, so that can happen. Because I mean, I can show you guys right now. For example, white was the one I had the least of, so light blue here kept going, and I can show you guys that right now. So white was the last one, but you can see white blue went up a lot because it was I it still to go because white had to catch up. Now the other ones kind of just started going because I had them all turned on before I set up the actual detectors right here. So pretty much what's happening with this setup is these are all in a tick de delay of 8. These ones are in 16 because they're doubled up. The block breaker breaks the block. Sorry, breaks the tall flower. If you do, you have to break it at the top because if you break it at the bottom, there's a chance that the block breaker might just straight up break the petal on the ground. So it may just break this block right here instead of the actual tall flower. So by putting it on the top block, that will never happen and kind of just save yourself some time. And here we got bone meal. The bone meal just grows it instantly. One bone meal makes it grow. Tall. Then over here, we just got the petals going right into the dispenser to plant them down. And it's the same for all these, except these these ones with the triple ones. They're just on 16 because this is running twice. I want it to make sure it was okay. Because the reason these are at 16, guys, and these are at 8, is because the absorption hopper cannot uh, input into the crafter fast enough. And I didn't want the, I don't want the absorption hopper to back up, which is why I had it set at those times. So this is pretty much how this all works for all eight of them. You can see here, 16, 16. I don't know if it's going to go this far. 16 and 16. And these are all set to 40, 96. And that's pretty much how those work down there. So what do I have down here? Down here, I have on the up, I have an import with a miscable flower. And then the same for all the ones going down. And they all, on the crafters, have outputs right here with pipes simply just piping right into here to the drawer controller right here, and then having the laser pump out so it can refill all the uh, dispensers with the flower petals. Now, also what I have down here is I probably need to fix some of my cable mess because I don't need this cable mess anymore, but it should still should still do its work pretty well. And that's pretty much it. The detectors are both blocks so they can actually just hook right into, into each other. So this is kind of what I have so far, guys. Now what I need to work on right now is actually getting I mean, the flowers created. I'm not. I know I said the dropper earlier from open crate from Batania, but I'm not sure actually that's going to work. I mean, it probably would, but I think I want to get a more foolproof way of doing it. And when I figure that out, guys, I'll bring you back in. Okay, guys, I was able to figure out a way to fully auto craft Batania man made flowers. Now, I went through three iterations of this. This is my first iteration. This was me just trying to figure out how to get water in there. And this setup does work to get water in there. This uh, just sucks up the empty water bottle, or sorry, the empty bottle. And this this actually does work. This works 100%. However, this all this does is just feed it water buckets. But I realized if I had to add another thing onto this to actually do the auto crafting for making the actual flowers, I feel like it would have been too big. And that's where this guy over here comes in. So right here, it's very simple what I can do. This has a pattern in it. The pattern has a water bucket. The mystical flower, a seed, and its output are the flower itself, which is the pure days in this case, and the bucket because the bucket is not consumed. Now, I had a few problems when actually creating this. My first problem was, I can, well, I'll, you know, I can just show you guys what the problem was. So let's just remove this quickly. So this is on a 40 tick delay, but that doesn't matter right now. So my first problem was this. So this is what the setup looked like. Just ignore this redstone piece right here for now. I would go here, I would select, uh, so let's just go to one. One would work fine, see? It drops the flowers in, 
works perfectly. However, the problem I would have with this setup right here is if I selected two, if you look here, it just kept dropping the stuff in and you know that that doesn't work. So I had to figure out a way so it would only drop in a I guess one set at a time. I put that there so I could just clear it because like I, I I I spent way, I spent like an hour figuring this out guys at least. So to fix this, let's just put all this back in the system. What I would do is I have this comparator going out because what this comparator does is when this uh, Batania pot is filled with water, it actually sends a redstone signal out which would turn the signal off, which would then activate the timer here. And this has to be set to 40 ticks because it takes almost exactly two seconds for this craft to complete. Now this will be different per flower because this flower has four petals. So this has six things dropping in total, which takes about two seconds. So other things may have a little bit different timing, but this is the timing that works for the pure daisy or any flower that has four petals dropped in. So now with this little setup right here, we have to go into the crafter and select the mode that says redstone pulse to insert the next set. What this does means is the first set goes in normally. However, it will not insert the next set until it receives a redstone pulse. And this makes it so the redstone pulse is two seconds later. So now that we have all this set up here, if I, let's say, want to do 10, what will happen is it will drop the set in. We can watch right here. It will pulse, it will drop the next set in, and it will continue going. I, I didn't explore going any less than 40. I went 30, then went up to 40. So I'm pretty sure 40 is probably perfect because, I mean, you, you see this, guys. It's working perfectly fine right here. So what I can do now is now that I have this setup created, and I know this setup works, I can use this to make, excuse me, sorry, all flowers I want to do uh, for the ref, the ross, the ra, the ref, the ref flowy, the ref flowsy flower, right? That's how you pronounce it, I think. And now we can check here. I got all 10 flowers. You can see I've, I've been doing a lot of test trials with this. That's why I have 40 flowers right now. But this is what I will do, guys. I'm going to automate these four flowers right here. We already have, I'm not going to, I'm going to move this automation because I don't want this right here because this is kind of an, an eyesore. So I'm going to make this automation probably, probably somewhere down here. Probably have it somewhere down here to make the automation for all the flowers. And I'm going to end up most likely putting them all into a two by two drawer system. So if we pull out drawers, we'll probably just put it into one of these guys right here. And that should be pretty good. And then, well, <laughs> Let's just get this part done, and then we can talk about actually placing the flowers over here. I do have an idea, which you may, if that particle, be able to guess what it is, but I'll leave that up to you guys. Just guess until I do it in you know, the next few minutes. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set up all four flowers with this, and then once I get that set up, I'll bring you guys back in. All right, guys, I set up the four flower automation. Remember, it is the hydrangea, the mana start, the pure daisy, and the endo flame. And this is exactly how it turned out to look. It's pretty much the exact same setup as upstairs. However, I made it a little bit more compact by putting everything next to each other. If you have one by itself, it's like a four by four by five. No, four by four by four. However, with putting all four together, that's now a seven by seven by four. So it actually saves a pretty good amount of space. Now, I haven't really tested this too much. I tested it. I tested each flower to make sure each flower worked and each flower does work, but I actually haven't tried, you know, crafting them all at the same time. So I thought it'd be fun to craft all at the same time. I do have an exporter right here. You can see this is my little test area right here to see if it worked or not. So what I want to do with you guys is just craft all at the same at the same time and see if it works. And end of flame should be the last one. Let's see if anything messes up. Nothing looks like it's messing up so far at least. Okay, it looks like everything's working perfectly fine guys. So now that we have this working what we have to do is get the flowers automatically placed so the ra 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 flosia is that what it's called where is raflosia the ra yeah, the raflosia so that raflosia can in fact let's see we got or, or they got oh they probably got oxbord in there um so we can get the raflosia to eat all the flowers now i do have an idea with how I'm going to do that. I'm not sure if it's going to work though, but I do have an idea. So I'm going to do, actually I can show you guys the idea quickly. So the idea is to use the planters, the planters from industrial for growing. Now I do have some planters already placed down under here because I was just thinking about if it works, but if you 
see right here, if you show the output, it does plant directly above it. I actually don't know if the planter can even accept these flowers, to be honest with you. So let's just check quickly. Because if this planter doesn't work, I'm going to have to go back to square zero, honestly. So we'll just take a flower out. I'm not even sure it's going to fit in the slot. So if we go to here. Okay, so it will go in the input, which means hopefully... Okay, it looks like this will work. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to set up probably one flower. And if it works, I'll bring you guys back in and show you guys how it's working. And then I'll set up the rest of the flowers. Oh, and as you guys can probably see... I did add twice as many flowers down because instead of doing five in between, I can do four in between. Sorry, just two in between, which means I could double the amount of flowers I could put down. So I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do exactly that. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set a, set up one of these guys and see if it works. I only have four flowers automated. I know I said I would do eight, but I think I'm just going to stick for four for now, and I'm just going to alternate, I guess. So I'll do the first four, then we'll have the, the four go again and see how that goes out. So again, sorry, once I get those set up guys, I'll bring you guys back in. So I'm, I'm just rambling on and on. After a whole bunch of trial and error, I finally figured out a way to place these flowers so that the Reftal, Re, sorry, not the Reftalia, sorry, the Reflosia eats the flowers correctly and also doesn't make too many flowers come out at once. Before I go down there, I'll just show you guys quickly what this is. So each one of these guys has one mana, mana elven spreader they're going to shoot into, a mana splitter, which is going to go into the pool right here. Mana Splitter is pretty much do as it says. It could have you can have up to four different pools here, and it will shoot into the mana spreader, and it'll be fine. But we're not doing that right now. So I have both of them shooting into one. I don't know why that one has extra. Probably from oh, probably from extra ones for me testing that one right there. It's going to go into the mana pool, which is going to shoot out into this mana pool, which is going to shoot into this mana pool over here. And on this mana pool, I'm going to have a recessive spark. I don't have any sparks over there right now, but it's going to have a recessive spark, which is going to then fill up all these pools over here. So now that we have that out of the way, I want to show you guys what I actually did. Actually, I'm going to show you guys each iteration I had, because I went through three different iterations to make this work. The first iteration was just right here. It was, you guys, I guess it's pretty much just me putting one of the flowers in every single time. And here it just alternates between each, this is just me testing something right here. This is, I guess, the, the second and a half iteration. So this one initially had a hydrange in it. This one had the endoflame. This one had the pure daisy. This one had the mana star. And then this one right here. Went back to the hydrangea in all four. However, when I when I did that one, it placed all of them at the same time, and the hydrangea just kept eating the same one over and over again. So that didn't work. The next thing I tried was doing the plant sower, and this kind of worked, but it still had the same problem as the initial one, where it would just place them all in the flower to only eat one, maybe two. I usually end up eating these three right here, and not any of the other ones, and it just didn't really work that well. So the final, I guess the next iteration was, I was seeing if I could just place this all right here and if it would just go every other. So that was like, I guess the third iteration. And the final and the working iteration is the one right here. So this uses this little timer over here. These hourglasses are another thing from Britannia that are very useful. If I take my wand, you can see that one sand equals one second, which is really convenient. So every second, it activates a redstone signal. You guys can see here, these all are in 8 seconds, which means a full circle takes this block 8 seconds to go all the way around. And that means this block is at 2 seconds at each of these areas, which just so happenly is exactly how long these guys need to take to, to pulse. So, it pulses one of these guys every 2 seconds, which is just about enough time for the flower up there to eat. So you guys can see it working. I can just connect it right here. I can bring you guys upstairs. We can see right here. We can watch it a little bit. Places one, places the other, places that one, then it places the one right here next. It eats it, places right there. And we can see it is doing its good old job of eating flowers and giving me mana. So now that I have a working way of doing this, I am I am very happy to have a working way of doing this because I was very nervous I wouldn't be able to do this in some decent way. I'm going to that now I'm going to do this that I have for this one for all six of them here. It only took like ten minutes to get all this set up, so all I should have to do now is take my laser wrench and just connect it right here. This should both give everything power and it should give them the ability to place. So let's see if it works. Looks like it's kind of working. However, it looks like I didn't set this one over here correctly. So let's go take a look at the, lock, at the last one and see what I did wrong there. 
I may have just not done the cards correctly. So what is wrong with these? Oh, did I just not connect them? No, so I did connect it up. It is output. I don't actually know what's wrong with these guys. Is I actually have no clue what's going on with these guys. Um, it's placing them. Oh, it's placing them, but this is just not eating them. That's very confusing. This is, what's this one connected to? So it's connected to oh, maybe it's because, no. I'm not actually sure what's wrong with this one, guys. So I'll just have to get back to that one and think about it a bit later. But as we can see here, we got the Raftalia, <laughs> the, the Raflosia flowers, 100% automated that was so much work guys i didn't expect it to be that hard to do first thing we had to do was get all these pedals down here automated which was annoying in and of itself but you know it works now and now we have just a ludicrous amount of pedals coming down here they are limited because of the detectors right here but i didn't want to just continuously make them i thought it'd be at least halfway decent to have the limiters right there what we had to work on next was getting the actual flowers automated which if we go down here we can see this wonderful automation setup right here, and it's doing its job as we speak. The reason it's doing its job is because I do have a crafter upgrade in this, and it's just exporting the flowers continuously into this little thing over here, which it then gets sucked out by this guy right here into all of the machines. Let's go to the correct area. Over here. And it sucks them all out to give them a stocking of one, because remember, I put stocking cards in each of these. So they have counting filters, which means they only put one in at each time. And with that, with the flower placed right there, these are now 100% automated, guys. That feels very good to do right now. So we are already, what, like 40, maybe not 40, but we're about 40 minutes in this episode here. So I'm going to finish the episode off right here. What I'm going to do next episode is get the Gormolaises automated. And that's going to be probably the same amount of <laughs> craziness as this guy right here was. But we at least have an idea of how to do it with the timer and stuff over there. So it should make the Gormalais flower significantly easier and go a little bit faster. What I also want to do near the end or at the beginning of next episode is to set up a, I don't know, just more power. Because I feel like with the entire smelt, super smelt over there that we have going on, super ore processing, that it's just sucking in so much power that I want to do another power source. I'm thinking of doing a, uh, what's it called, a power reactor. Because we have just so much of the raw uranite. That I thought it would be a pretty good idea to do that. And you guys may be seeing all the wheat seeds and wheat in here. And that's because of this guy over here. You probably saw me fly by it a second ago. While I was creating the flowers here, I realized I ran out of wheat seeds. And, well, you guys might know by now, but I kind of go big or go home. So I just made a giant wheat farm right here. And a giant wheat farm gives me tons of seeds and a tons of wheat. So I guess if I need anything for wheat in the future, I have all the wheat I will ever need. <laughs> but now we got everything crafted and everything is working perfectly, at least so far it seems, except this little doofus over here doesn't want to work for some reason. I don't know why. But yes, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling on again, guys. Thank you guys very much for watching this 20th episode of my Daryl of 20 119 Mod Pack series. I had so much fun figuring out how to automate this. It definitely made my brain work pretty hard. Oh, and I guess one thing, guys, is I'm going to add lenses, but I'll do that next at the start of next episode so you guys can see how that works. It should make these mana uh, spreaders shoot a little bit faster so they're not just constantly full of mana like you can see right here. But once again, thank you guys very much for watching this 20th episode. I've had so much fun doing it, and I look forward in the next episode to automating these Gormalaise flowers. Bye, guys.